Over a hundred years ago, telegraph and telephone engineers realized that different types of cable performed differently. Some were better at carrying signals over long distances than others. It became necessary to quantify this performance, so two fictional engineers that we'll call Luke and Fred set out to do some measurements. Luke set up a signal generator to send a signal with a power of 1,000 milliwatts into a piece of cable, whilst Fred went down to stores with a wheelbarrow to fetch a one-mile-long reel of cable. Luke then connected the signal generator to one end of the cable, and Fred used his signal meter to see what was coming out of the other end. Now it would seem that the cable that Fred had selected from stores was not well suited to long runs, because only 100 milliwatts of power was available at the other end of the run. "'Why, this cable's rubbish,' said Fred. "'It's used 900 milliwatts on the first mile. "'Another couple of hundred yards and there'd be nothing left at all.' "'Maybe it's a faulty reel,' said Luke. "'Let's try another reel to see if that's bad as well.' "'Right,' said Fred, and he set off back to stores, "'with his wheelbarrow to get another reel of the same type of cable. "'On his return, he looked at the first reel of heavy cable on the floor and said, I'm sure this second reel of cable is going to measure OK. We can connect it to the end of the first reel to save me lifting it out of the way. A hundred milliwatts of signal is enough to do a test. Very well, make it so, said Luke. This time, when Fred connected up his meter, he found that there was ten milliwatts of signal available at the end of the second reel. Well, this reel is better, but it's still losing ninety milliwatts in a mile, said Luke. I think we're going to have to try another reel to find out what's going on. Right, said Fred, and he set off again with his wheelbarrow. When the third reel of cable had been attached to the end of the chain, the reading on Fred's meter was only one milliwatt. Nine milliwatts of loss on this reel, said Fred. I think we're going to have to send the whole batch back. Hmm, said Luke, scratching his head. Funny, we've lost ninety percent on each reel. That seems a bit of a coincidence. Maybe the position in the chain determines the loss for each reel. We could swap the position of each reel in the chain to check that, said Fred. Brilliant idea, said Luke. Make it so. Right, said Fred, starting to shift the heavy reels of cable and wishing he'd kept his mouth shut. As it turned out, swapping the order of the reels of cable didn't make any difference. Each reel lost 90% of the energy it was given. This is an important discovery, said Luke. We now know that the loss in a cable can be quoted as a percentage per mile. That's a pain, said Fred. It means that to find a loss on, say, a 25% per mile cable over 42 miles, I've got to multiply by 0 0.75 42 times, and no one's invented the electronic calculator yet. You're right, said Luke. There must be a better way. How about we quote the loss in noughts? What do you mean, noughts, said Fred. Well, look, said Luke. This cable here loses exactly one nought per mile. So two miles is two noughts. Three miles is three noughts. Of course, this is a rather poor cable, so perhaps it would be more sensible to split each nought up into some smaller units. Perhaps we call them centinoughts or millinoughts to make it easy to do the calculation with better quality cable. Right, said Fred. But I think we only need to split each knot up into ten subunits. Call it a deci knot. We only need to know whether someone at the other end of the phone line can hear what's being said. Ten percent more or less signal doesn't make any difference. This is starting to sound like a really good idea, said Luke. But I'm feeling a bit daft calling the units knot. We need to name them after someone famous like Voltaire or Faraday. They've both been used already, said Fred. How about Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone? You can't have a unit called a Desi Alexander Graham Bell, said Luke. No, call it the Desi Bell, you fool, said Fred, who wasn't too good at spelling. Excellent, said Luke. Make it so. I'm still not quite sure what happens in between the full knots, at bells, I mean, said Fred. How do we describe a cable that loses, say, 50% of its signal per mile? 
OK, said Luke. We'll draw up a table and try to fill in some gaps. We know where we are with one, ten, a hundred and a thousand. Just count the noughts to find the bells and multiply by ten to turn that into decibels. Now let's have a look at the multiples of two, which fit in between one and ten. Now two times two times two makes eight, which doesn't quite reach our first naught. Since another times two would take us to sixteen, which is quite a long way past, I'm going to call it 0 0.9 of the way to the first full naught, or bell. That makes it nine decibels. Now we know that each times two is equally spaced, so the other two entries are easy to fill in, 3 dBs and 6 dBs. Now that we know how to handle times twos, we can fill them in on the rest of the table. We can also draw up a table for divisions. It's exactly the same as the multiply table, but has a minus sign in front of the bell figures. Right, said Fred. That's brilliant. We'd better alert the authorities to the existence of our new unit. Well, actually no, said Luke. What we've been describing isn't actually a new unit at all. It's really just a different way of writing down a common or garden number which turns multiply and divide operations into add and subtract operations. Fred was still clearly excited about having found a new branch of maths that would be useful to telephone engineers around the world. He said, Well, this is brilliant. It ought to be taught in schools instead of all that useless stuff that no one ever needs. But Luke sighed and said, I've just realised. This is already taught in school. We all did it. Except in those days... It was called logarithms. Having seen that decibels are actually just a logarithmic way of expressing simple numbers, let's just have a quick look at a couple of applications. That should help clarify how they are used in the real world. Firstly, sound. You may have heard the loudness of sound quantified in decibels, for instance a jet aircraft at 140 dBs, or a quiet office at 40 dBs. Now we know that decibels are just numbers, so what are the units of sound? Well, in this context, the unit that has been chosen is the quietest thing that an average person can hear. This sound level is called A, and is written 0 dBA. Remembering that 0 dB is just the number 1, we could read this as 1 times louder than the quietest thing an average person can hear. The onset of pain in a noisy environment is usually considered to be about 120 dBA. This means that a human ear can cope with sounds up to 12 noughts louder than the quietest thing it can hear. That's a range of 1 million million. Pretty good sense of the human ear. Best look after it. Signals Now Luke and Fred were investigating signal losses in cable. They found a loss of 90% per mile in their cable. Now this is a factor of 10 each mile, which they ended up calling one bell, or 10 decibels per mile. This is the correct way of expressing the loss. There are no units involved because a factor is just a pure number. However, when they started out, they were measuring milliwatts. It's actually quite common to use decibels this way, especially when describing the input sensitivity or the output power of radio devices. The convention is marked by an M following the DB. For instance, a standard Wi-Fi device for use in the wireless networking of computers might have an output power of 100 milliwatts, often expressed as 20 dBm. This is convenient because when the losses associated with cables and the gains associated with antennas need to be considered, they can be just added in to find the actual radiated power and eventually the signal available at the receiver. This can be compared with the sensitivity of the receiving device to check that a particular system will work. This calculation is called a link budget, and is daily fare for anyone connecting buildings for computer networking using Wi-Fi. If you need to know more about wireless networking and link budgets, check out the relevant product sections and learning centre on the Solwise website.